So a few months ago, fellow YouTuber Unsurpassable Z messaged me on Discord, saying that he was organizing a Stardew Valley speedrunning competition with all the biggest Stardew Valley speedrunners and content creators called the Stardew Valley Cup. And I, who had just hit 1,000 subscribers for the first time like two hours ago, was like... We were all given a list of around 100 tasks to complete, each with a different point value depending on how difficult the task would be. Catch is, we'd only receive three hours to finish as much as we could. This is gonna be hard. At this point, I was wondering if it would even be worth all the effort and planning needed to have even a tiny chance at winning this thing. But then I noticed something. The prize pool. Over $40,000 total in cash prizes. Yeah, okay. Everyone would be competing in four teams of four, each consisting of two seasoned veteran speedrunners and two casual content creators. I'll give you one wild guess as to what category I fall into. This is gonna be our little chicken area. Uh, oh, I don't have any tools. What do I do? Did I just soft lock myself? Oh my god. So now that we know the stakes, let's meet the team. Our two speedrunners are King Nublet, a world record holder who's been featured on the channel many times, and Blade, whose knowledge of the game and experience in programming have produced tons of invaluable speedrunning tools, like a computer program that can predict the locations of ladders in the mines. On the more casual side, we have Sharky Games, a legendary starter YouTuber I'm sure most of you are very familiar with, and then me. Let's go team. We had about a month to practice before the event, though our team's time zone issues as well as baby boy going to college prevented us from practicing at all in the first two weeks, which put us at an immediate disadvantage. Even so, we practiced and practiced and practiced some more. In the end, the four of us ended up with a combined 125 hours of work leading up to this event. Needless to say, we wanted the dub. So how did it go? Let's find out. For the glory of Krobus's Crocuses, that's our team name by the way, we're gonna crush this challenge. So even though this challenge required us to complete a bunch of super off the wall tasks, we actually started out with some pretty standard first day stuff. Blade, Sharky, and I focus on planting and watering our group's combined 60 parsnips as quickly as possible while King starts cutting wood for three chests. After all our practice throughout the weeks prior, we were calm, collected, and ready for anything. Alright, let's go! Oh my god! Oh my god. After spending the next three days just watering and immediately sleeping, we have our first big day. King harvests our parsnips and marks the spot where the gold quality one popped up, since Blade is planning to do some crop manipulation later. Okay, wait, let's pause for a second. Basically, after rooting through the code of the game, hardcore speedrunners, in this case our very own Blade, found a set pattern to determine which spots will yield gold quality crops on any given day, meaning he can essentially ensure that any crops we need to be gold quality are gold quality, so we leave nothing up to chance. This is key, since we're going to need three gold cauliflowers to get the best possible response out of the luau next month. Why do we need the best response out of the luau? Because friendship is magic. Okay, let's move on. After that, we split up to each make some progress in a different skill. Sharky starts working towards catching 24 different fish, King does some foraging and resource gathering, and I start clearing out the debris on our farm. A couple days of watering later, we have another big progress day. Sharky continues fishing, King does some more resource gathering, and Blade and I head to the mines. Blade uses his ladder predicting skills to drop as many floors as possible while I lag behind and gather copper ore. We're going to need a lot of metal bars for future challenges, so it's good to have someone in charge of gathering ore early on so we don't have to backtrack later. And it looks like our foolproof plan is working, thanks to our our intense planning. Just a heads up, by the way, guys, we finished routing this morning. <laughs> we did, yes. <laughs> Meanwhile, King donates everything he's found lying on the ground so far to the community center, which means... Bundle complete. Yeah, nice. Later in the day, Sharky and King join us in the mines to take advantage of a multiplayer bug where if multiple players break a rock at the same time, the ore gets duplicated which will save us a ton of resource mining. Not too long after, on floor 24, we get a huge lucky break. Yes. Oh, yes. There it is. Not only do we find a club, which is a huge weapon upgrade for the mines, but we successfully duplicate it, meaning we all get the upgrade. Well, except Sharky, because he was too busy doing fish things. Oh, God. The reason this is such a huge lucky break is that if you're holding the club and then right click to use the smash special move, you can actually just spam left click and C on the keyboard. You essentially beat the living daylights out of everything in the game. So that's cool. Our main goal at the moment is to get at least 220 copper ore and 100 
170 iron ore for the boiler room in the community center, five furnaces, some tool upgrades, and as many sprinklers as we can make. Despite a few energy management troubles, we pass out in the mines having reached level 35, which isn't too terrible compared to our practice runs, but also not the best. The next day we head straight back to the mines for more ore gathering in progress toward floor 80. I make sure to grab the slingshot on floor 40 since I'll need it for a task that I'll unfortunately have to do later. Okay, so at the start of this whole thing, we thought it might be a good idea to give each team member a central role. That is, Blade would be in charge of mines progress and general routing, King would be in charge of farming, foraging, and artifact hunting, Sharky would be in charge of... fish. Help me. And the more astute of you might have noticed that that leaves me. The village idiot. I can make a w shape with my tongue. After some discussion, we decided that my jobs would be mining resources, which I mentioned above, Romeo, meaning I would be in charge of all the friendship and love-based quests, and finally, Granny Betrayer. Please let me explain. One of the challenges was to hit Evelyn, the town's sweet old lady with a rock from a slingshot. And of course, I was the one left with that. So I'm gonna have to go through with that later. But for now, the townsfolk can continue to live in peace. Pretty shortly after, we score our first points when Sharky completes a help wanted request by giving Willie a quartz. So we are officially on the board. We quickly add to our total when Sharky buys the fiberglass rod, King talks to the dwarf in the mines, and we reach level 50. After an intense duplicating session, we quickly reach all of the ore we need to grab before the 13th, which means we'll have plenty of time to smelt it all. Now, before we get any further, I have something to tell you. I've withheld some very important information from you all. Before this competition, Z told us there would be five surprise challenges scattered throughout the event, each worth 50 points. Before the event, we each took a guess as to what they might be, and my guess was that it would be based on the Junimo Kart arcade machine in the saloon, and lo and behold, this was actually the first challenge. Having correctly predicted this, I respectfully informed the others that I had foreseen this circumstance in a mellow and reserved manner. I have higher score than anyone else in Junimo Kart. I told less. you! I told you! I told you! Is that not the first oh, thing I said? No. On the 9th of spring, we hit floor 80 at 550 and dip so Blade doesn't get murdered. After a few days of watering and naming the cat Sir Passable Z for 5 points, we head back to the mines on the 12th to duplicate some gold ore and look for a fire quartz. We also duplicate stone by all knocking up the large rocks that spawn in the mines. We leave the mines at 1pm at floor 85 after gathering all the ore we need for the foreseeable future. And just like that, we sleep straight to the 13th, which is the egg festival. I spend the morning smelting the ore we've gathered to make some spring while Blade, King, and Sharky work on clearing out and prepping the little splinker Splinker. While Blade, King, and Sharky work on clearing out and prepping the little sprinkler plot on our farm for the strawberries we're looking to buy. At the Egg Festival, we work together. I mean, for the most part. Punch ya! No, 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 no. Dang it. Try it, uh, try it again next you time, tried. I dare you. you little, yeah, you that's sneak. what I thought this time. Firm did it take my fifth one this time, boys. I did not. <laughs> Oh. I dare you. I dare you. I nearly beat you to that one. And everyone gets the hat except Sharky. All right, hats on. Hats on for everyone yeah, who got yeah, it. Yeah, love that, boys. Yeah, love that. <laughs> to collect every single egg, which gets us another 15 points, we plant the seeds at nighttime and go to sleep. On the morning of the 17th, we get some more news. Collect one of the following statuses. Eight... HMTGF, Pink Lemon, or Ferrogumon. Oh, the uh, secret statues. statues. Okay, so one of the ways to get these statues is with a super cucumber, which is perfect since we already have time built into our route to catch one. So there's some good news. King harvests a gold cauliflower on the 19th and 20th, and on the 21st, we have our first day of actual gameplay since the Egg Festival a week prior. I quickly run to the wizard to activate the community center quest and proceed to go back to bed at like nine in the morning. So I guess still not that much action. This is where we really get into our rhythm for the rest of the speedrun. That is, bursts of five or so days without doing anything except sleeping, followed by one really busy day of getting as much done as possible, followed by more sleeping. The main purpose of this structure is to make sure that everyone is constantly working on something at the same time, so we don't have any one player without a job to do. As far as time, we're about an hour in at this point, but we still have a lot to do. We wake up on the 26th with our main concern for the day being Blade checking the traveling cart to see if we can snag any lucky quest items. For anyone unaware, the traveling cart comes to Stardew Valley twice per week and has a completely random rotating stock of items, which means that she could sometimes sell you stuff way before you even have any access to it. Blade unfortunately doesn't find anything of interest, but it's still always good to check. While he's taking care of that, I do some chest reorganization and the others clean some debris on the farm. Our next big action day is the first of summer, so we're officially out of spring. As with the start of any season, there are tons of odd jobs to do today. I focus on tilling and watering 120 tiles for all the radishes we're gonna plant. Even though these spots aren't actually hooked up 
up to any sprinklers. We're not planning to water them that much after the first day, since just the natural days it rains outside should be enough for them to grow by the end of the season. Plus, if we harvest 100 of the same crop, we get points. And, like, I mean, yeah, it's, yeah, we want points. It's the whole... This the whole thing is about getting- yeah, we want to get points. While I'm toiling away on the farm, Sharky upgrades her axe for five points. King buys a backpack upgrade, and Blade gives Robin her lost axe for another five points. We also plant some hot peppers, which I'm going to need to woo Shane later on. During this whole deal, Sharky also catches his tenth unique fish, which nets us another five points. On the eleventh of summer, we each take a gold cauliflower to put in the luau soup for a bunch of bonus friendship points. Well, except for Blade, since you'll be throwing in some sap for more points. We're going to have to find a spice berry, a sweet pea, and some grapes for the summer foraging bundle in the community center, which might be a more difficult task than we anticipated. Forgeable goods in Stardew Valley can be really temperamental, so we just need to cross our fingers and hope that we- Oh, I already got them all at the bus stop, we're fine. So I complete the summer foraging bundle, which means we now have access to the boiler room. Today is the first of many days of giving Shane a hot pepper on his way to Joja Mart, so everyone say hello, you'll be seeing him a lot. Up until this point, our speedrun has gone exactly how we practiced. It's genuinely shocking how well we're doing. That is, up until now. See, at the Luau, it's really important, really important, that I speak with a bunch of townsfolk before we begin the ceremony, since Blade has calculated with extreme detail how much I have to do to meet the absolute minimum friendship points for what the challenge requires. If I don't talk to everyone, our entire route gets thrown off. And here's the miscommunication that led to what ended up being by far our biggest time loss in this event. That's a challenge. Uh, Start when you're ready. That's a challenge. I'm yeah. not ready. I'm not ready. No, we wait. In the pot. Look. Oh, I'm not ready. I didn't, didn't talk, talk to in? people or put my cauliflower in. I said I had four people to talk to. Four? Uh, yes. Marty, oh, no. Evelyn, Caroline, Robin. I didn't get to talk to Caroline or put my cauliflower in. So. Good what, do we'll put this in, right? what do we do? That, that completely ruins our Yeah, that, our that destroys route. the whole friendship yeah. route. Do you want to reset quick? We're going to have, have to reset. We, we, have to really come come we have to. Yeah. So we have to reset the day which loses a ton of time. Regardless, we recover and redo everything we did the first time, earning another 10 points for putting sap in the luau pot. We're just following the hero's well, journey mean... archetype that I learned in ninth grade English. We're fine. It's a setback, but we still need to move forward. After all, it's only up from here, right? Right? Well, after King completes the boiler room for another 10 points, Sharky has a four hour window to catch the super cucumber after the luau, since this is really our only shot at this thing. It's really hard to catch the super cucumber this early, but he'd actually done it in every single one of our practice runs. However, like 60 points hang in the balance here, so it's understandably a ton of pressure. And honestly, you probably already know where this is going. These I'm all over the place. Because I have time. I'm all over the place. I'm just missed a cucumber. No. No, I can't do it. Dang, that's all right. I can't, so, do you know what it is? I have not got enough fishing skill for this. Normally I'm level three or four, but I've not been doing much fishing. So we'll have to think of another way to get one of those 50 point statues later on. But for now, we forge onwards. On the 14th, I water our radishes and give our buddy another pepper while King sells the bounty of our harvests thus far. And as if we weren't already dealing with enough, we also get hit with our third surprise challenge. Have someone wear a full dinosaur oh. outfit. Jeez. Shirts made from emerald, dinosaur pants, and dinosaur hat. That's gonna be tough. That is insanely hard. We upgrade our axe to steel, which earns us another 10 points. Plus, we plant our next batch of melons and a single summer spangle, which I'm going to give to Caroline later on. Nothing but sleeping and pepper harvesting until the 26th of summer. While King harvests our crops and Sharky and Blade go foraging, I run to the community center to complete the 10,000 gold bundle. The reason we're completing this specific one is because the reward is a lightning rod, and we'll need a lot of battery packs for later. Meanwhile, we discuss a backup plan for getting one of the secret statues, since the super cucumber was a bust. Another route to a statue is by putting a strange bun in the box in Vincent's room. And since strange buns have about a 4% chance to drop from shadow brutes in the mines, this seems like our best option. Now the only concern is how to get inside Vincent's room, since that requires at least two hearts of friendship points. How could we get in Vincent's room for this statue thing? How can that be done? Birthday. When, he, when is his birthday? When is Vincent's Let's birthday? Bring something. Damn it. Frick. Oh, well, okay, we'll go for next year. <laughs> you could drop a diamond uh, on him or something. Oh wait, I'll, or we could just literally. save a grape. Just grab a grape this season and save it. It'd be so stop. easy to keep a grape and give it to him on his birthday. Yep. Then you've got access to his door. I'm gonna go grab a grape. Well, now that we have that sort of figured out, we all go to bed. The next morning, King sells all our radishes, which means we earn another 15 points for shipping 100 of the same crop. After a couple more days of sleeping, we're officially in fall, and we still have about an hour and 15 minutes left on the clock. So we're doing fine. It's another busy one too. 
King and Blade focus on preparing the land and planting our behemoth crop of pumpkins, plus a couple fairy roses for Granny Evelyn, who doesn't deserve to get sniped with a rock, while I make a huge donation run to the museum. I also make sure to give Shane his weekly hot pepper. It's important to note that for the last couple weeks or so, Blade and King have been stocking and restocking a few preserves jars each morning with melons before sleeping. We need a substantial amount of money for everything we want to do later, and Blade figured that making fruit preserves was the most efficient way to do that. Either way, I have 16 jars of melon jelly to sell to Pierre for some extra cash. While I'm taking care of that, Sharky's busy completing another challenge. I'm, I'm coming home his... with the seeds. Legendary yeah, fish legendary cool. fish. That's another challenge. So we sleep straight to the 15th. I run and give Shane another pepper while everyone else plants our next batch of pumpkins. Our next action day is the 18th, and I probably don't have that much to do. Oh, well, it's a busy one, so let's kill it. King is mainly focused with the community center, Sharky is still fishing like a madman, and Blade is making some progress in the mines. I, on the other hand... <sighs> Grab Linus's basket, return Linus's basket, give Shane a pepper, check the special request board, accept the Robin's resource rush challenge, cut wood on the farm, also King completes the vault, which is another 10 points, run to the saloon, look for a pink cake, find no pink cake because whatever, I don't even care, run to the doctor's office, give Marty an amethyst because it's her dumb stupid freaking birthday, run to Marty's ranch, grab Lewis's purple shorts, spicy, and apparently the next secret challenge is to craft a mini jukebox, which is insanely difficult with only an hour left. Shiny Do made a whole video about how dumb this challenge was if you want to check it out later, but watch this one first, okay? Okay. And finally, we can go to bed. At the moment, we have 150 points. Hamzy Ams has 190, and I don't have any of the other score sheets up at this point. We shipped the fire corpse. We oh, shipped the fire corpse. Yeah, make that 155. With that ominous score update aside, we forge onwards. We sleep until the 28th, where we harvest some pumpkins, King hits level 10 farming for another 20 points, Sharky makes a recycling machine for another 10 points, and we hit the sack. It's winter now! Woo! And there's like 45 minutes left. Oh god. On the third of winter, I grab a cloth from our recycling machine, which is super clutch since it allows me access to Emily's sewing machine. This is absolutely crucial, and you'll see why later. Meanwhile, I continue my role as the anchor of the team. Okay. On the seventh, remember to ship those pickles. We don't actually need you now because we don't need it for the vault. The vault's don't done. ship the pickles, guys. Don't do it. And we sleep until the 8th, which is the Festival of Ice. I give Shane yet another hot pepper and clap some cheeks at the ice fishing contest for another 15 points. Well, at least Blade does. I'm gonna win this. Oh my oh, god. Lord above. Oh my god. How many fish do you guys get? I think I tied it literally at the very end. Nonsense. Absolute Oy! nonsense. There's points. There's points. So you have to actually yes, draw the, the fish into you. You can't just finish the catch. We set up a crab pot for another 10 points before going to bed. We spend the 12th of winter looking for a purple crocus flower since we need one for the community center. I'm checking backwoods. Must stop. I'm checking forest. Just in case. What is backwoods? I got one. Mean? Got one. Got one. Got Never one. mind. We're fine. You got one? The 15th of winter is another unholy monster of a day. I. Wait outside Marty's ranch for like two hours. Hey. Hit Evelyn with the slingshot. Um, Hold your horses, cool kid gaming. That's coming, dude. God, <laughs> out for blood. I mean, on the bright side, there's some immediate good news from Blade. It's I got so, a change plan. So bleak. You got it? I got a change plan. Yes, good oh job. Oh my God. So with that found, we're on our way to getting that secret statue. All right, I'm going to level with you. At this point, we're feeling a little concerned. According to the live scores, we aren't doing too well. And with only about half an hour left, things aren't looking great for us. Some may just view this as evidence to give up. But we... We just got better. We were on fire, completing challenges left and right. Our score just kept climbing. I even find time to tailor Lewis's shorts with a gold bar and wear them in front of his stupid face for even more points. I run to the mines to kill a bunch of skeletons in our pursuit of completing a monster slayer goal. And suddenly, we're back in the driver's seat. We've become a well-oiled machine in a matter of minutes. This is gonna hurt a lot of people. Who's uh -oh. Harvey? Uh, anyways, Blades hits the bottom of the mines and King gets a pearl from the night market. I complete the crafts room for yet another 10 points, and we're still on fantastic pace. Before we continue, I have to warn you that things are about to get graphic. Today is the day that I must betray sweet Granny Evelyn. Sharky heads to Joja. Yes, I know, we're desperate. To purchase the greenhouse and some Joja wallpaper for 10 points. He also catches his 24th fish, which earns us another 10 points. Okay, here we go. I walk into Evelyn's house. Give her a fairy rose, which she loves, and then she teaches me how to bake cookies out of the kindness of her heart. And then, and the time has come. Bonk. Ah! 
Challenge complete. I need therapy. We only have 20 minutes left. So let's knock this last bit out of the park. We wake up on the 23rd of winter. I've been a bunch of random crap since when time runs out, each team gets one point for each different item shipped. We also have plans to build a coop today. And thank God Blade and Sharky are ready to go. You end the shop menu? No, no, it's just closed. Ah, oh, dang it. We can't buy a building today. So that sucks. Whatever, we don't have time to mope. I donate enough items to the museum to earn a night on Eco Hill, which we hang up in our house for 10 points. In other news, Blade grabs some stone from a passing train, which gives us 10 more points. We really gained a lot of momentum in this last hour or so. We sleep until the 25th for the Feast of the Winter Star. I check my mail to see who my secret friend is, so I know who to give my gift to. And this was, in my opinion, by far the luckiest break we got throughout the whole event. Yep. Okay, mine's Vincent. <laughs> Let me explain. Remember how we needed to make a plan B for obtaining one of those secret statues? Well, to make this happen, we need enough friendship with Vincent to get in his room. Since we were way lower on time than we anticipated, we just kind of had to give up on the whole statue thing. But since I got Vincent as my secret buddy, I would become good enough friends with him to enter his room. So this crazy luck ended up winning us 50 points that we wouldn't have had otherwise. I track down Vincent at the festival and give him the pearl King grabbed at the night market for another 25 points. Then we wake up the next day with one simple goal get as many last minute points as possible before time runs out. I snag our secret statue for a much needed 50 points. Sharky fills our barn with animals and hangs up a boat painting in our house. Four minutes left. King gives Harvey a coffee and buys the lucky bow from the hat mouse. We sleep until spring third. One minute left. We're out of time to do much else at this point. We decide to end our time with a bang and have a spa party for the whole squad for a final 10 points. Get in, 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 there we go. Go, 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 Everybody go. Out. And just like that, our time is up. Our moderator adds one point for each item shift, which comes out to 46. And our final score, after two weeks of practice and three hours of gameplay, 466 points. Seems pretty good to me. After all our hardships, the luau, the super cucumber, the bad at video game. We put together an insane hot streak at the very end to claw our way back into contention. We persevered through every obstacle fate placed in our path. We hit the grandma with the rock for five points. We were resilient. We performed under pressure. We owned this competition. We- So in fourth place, with 466 points, our Crobuses Crocuses. Ooh. We got freaking last place. Are you kidding me? We honestly did about as well as we hoped, so I guess we just got outplayed. Unfortunately, it seems like the bad at game really did me in. Even though we didn't do the absolute best, we actually got dead last. I still had an absolute blast at this event. I got to meet tons of super cool folks and played a game that I love in front of over a thousand live viewers. And honestly, that's more than enough to be grateful for. And honestly, isn't the real prize just the friends we make along the way? Walking out of here in first place with $7,000 each. God damn it.